What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Brightburn. This movie was written by Brian and Mark Gunn. Okay, Brian Gunn is the brother of James Gunn, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy, and Mark is their cousin. So they're keeping it all in the family, man. I love it. The Guns. Uh, pretty cool last name, by the way. Gunn, two ends, pretty dope. Brightburn is essentially the story of what would happen if Superman crash landed on the farm and what if he was unsavory? You know what I'm saying? What if he wasn't this noble, good hearted Clark Kent that we all know and love? What if this kid was like, nah, I'm not feeling this person. I'm gonna just take him out. I'm not, I don't like what you're doing. I know what I'm capable of. I'm gonna just end your life. What if Superman was really like this? This is horrifying. We all know Superman. We all know what he's capable of. Heat vision, super speed, flight, strength, and vulnerability. You can't stab him, you can't shoot him. What if he wanted to kill you? What are you gonna do? If Superman wanted you dead tonight, what are you gonna do? You gonna call the cops? He gonna take out the whole police precinct. Easy. That's terrifying, man. This movie reminded me of a comic book series called Supreme Power. Marvel Comics had this like offset comic book vibe where it was like adult comics. And like, not adult as in porn, but just like they would take it there, like nudity, maybe, you know, violence. And Supreme Power was one of those series and it was about the Squadron Supreme are a group of superheroes pretty much based on the Justice League, but they were in the Marvel Universe. People like Hyperion was like the Superman character. Nighthawk was like Batman. And you had all of these characters. Dr. Spectrum was like the Green Lantern. And so they, they developed Supreme Power, and then this was a grittier take on that. Like Hyperion was the Superman character, and you know, him growing up with decent parents He's still figuring his powers out. And like, I remember they got him a puppy and you know, he the puppy scared him and his heat vision just incinerated the dog. It was all accidental, but it was like, this could really happen if a person with disabilities, you know, you scare me, oh, heat vision. I just, you know, incinerated the family pet. Uh, they raised them to be decent. The government started, you know, using them for their gain and like, but you got other, and there was a character within that book, he had super strength, but he was a serial killer. And so he would, he would like, you know, he would get prostitutes to come over. He would rip their limbs off. And just, he had just a pile of body parts in the back. So it was like, man, you get the other side of it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Batman is the way he is with Superman. He's like, yo, what if Superman goes off the rails and tries to kill everybody? We need a contingency plan just in case Superman. Superman's my boy. Clark Kent is my boy. But what if he wiles out? What are we going to do? Batman has a contingency plan for everybody in the Justice League, which I respect. Because at any moment, they come to work one day and be like, you know what, I'm killing everybody. What a, they got to be ready for this. So this movie is like, what happens when this kid finds out what he's capable of and he's not a good kid? Now, the kid played by Jackson ain't done. He did a great job. You felt his performance, it was like really creepy. Like you were like, man, this kid is creeping me out. And not, not so much like he was always creepy. It was just like, you see the, the switches in his head. Like, man, like, and this kid was actually in Avengers Endgame. He played a young Scott Lang in the scene where he kept coming back at different ages. He was one of those ages. He did a great job. First of all, Elizabeth Banks plays like, you know, the mom. She's dope in comedy and drama. She can do them both equally well, and I liked her in this movie. And the dad played by David Denman, it was cool because what happens in this movie is essentially this couple that can't really have kids, but they want they want kids. They've been struggling to like, you know, they've been struggling to get pregnant. And so, you know, this kid crash lands in the backyard and they keep him. I don't know if that was such a good idea on their part because, you know, and you, you know, they're keeping the fact that, they're keeping the kid's origin away from the kid. And that comes back, you know, within the film. But 
essentially they just raised this kid and like you know essentially they're ra they're raising an alien superman is an alien you know at the end of the day and so same with this kid and so you know as he gets older he starts to you know have visions and like you know hear things in his sleep and it's just become then he becomes aware of his capabilities and like you know once he becomes aware it's like it's not like hey i'm gonna protect humanity it's like hey i'm gonna hurt people that hurt me and so once you got that dynamic and, and the powers that this kid has, that's drama. That's like, yo, oh man, we done messed up now. Like, I don't know what to do. Without giving anything away, that's pretty much how the story unfolds. And it's like, the parents are like, yo, how do we stop what's happening with our son? This movie's a low budget movie. I, I've read that the budget was like six million. So they keep all the special effects pretty much low key, but it still works. Like, you know, it's creepy. There's creepy moments of like, oh, what is he gonna do? How is he gonna kill this person? Or what's he gonna do to this person? So that was pretty much exciting to see. And it was good, it was solid. Like, you know, one of the takeaways from the movie is you could create a super powered being type movie without the 80, 90, 150 million dollar budgets that like Marvel or DC always has. You could tell a low key story with a super being and keep the budget low, you know what I mean? And, and another takeaway is Superman, man. Like, I, it just makes you respect Batman even more when he's like, yo, I'm working with these cats, but if I gotta take them down, I gotta have a plan in place. And I respect that from Batman, man. I'm like, yo, you definitely do. He got that kryptonite bullet in the chamber just in case Superman wilds out. You need it. If somebody mind controls Superman, I want you to kill Chicago. Superman can do it. And if Bruce Wayne ain't there with the with the with the cock pistol with the kryptonite bullet in there, what what can you do? And so um, those are the take. It just really made me think about the Justice League. Even though this movie isn't this isn't a DC movie. This is just something a kid with Superman like powers, but it makes you think of the DC universe and Superman particularly. It's like, man, Superman's scary, man. I don't trust him now. <laughs> now I'm looking at Superman like, man, I don't know, man. At any moment, he can snap. And so, you know, those are my takeaways from this movie. Some of the cons I, I have with this movie is, why is he the way he is? I don't feel like that was fully explained in this movie. I don't feel like I got a, a real sense of why he was doing the things that he was doing, why he was the way that he was. Now, I... I, I you know, in, in the film, you know, there's some communications with him and his origin, but it still doesn't really, really tell me why. Granted, there's a message in there was like, all right, this is what he was supposed to do. Why does he immediately go to that rather than refer to his upbringing? Because he was, he was brought up good, positive, you know, to care and like a normal upbringing for a kid. Why did this supersede that? And I feel like that wasn't explained. And so that's my biggest issue with the movie. But uh, forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Brightburn. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Brightburn three and a half saxophones out of five. <laughs> Superman, man. I'm never turning my back on you again. I'm watching you, Superman. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right, Batman? Batman? All right, that's my review of Brightburn, man. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. Have you seen it? Do you want to check it out? What's keeping you at bay if you haven't checked it out already? Let me know in the comment section below. Movies like this are like, you know, um, of course, you, you know, you can watch the Justice League movies, Batman vs. Superman, or you can check out the Supreme Power series and comic books, because that that's really what, what I refer to, like when I watch this movie, I thought about that series. So check out Supreme Power if you can. If you got the Marvel Unlimited app, you can read. You know what? You can't read the, the Max adult version of it. You might have to find those in the actual comic book store. They shouldn't be too expensive. Or you can read Squadron Supreme on the Marvel Unlimited app. And those are the same characters. It's just not as rated R as the, the initial Supreme Power series. So uh, yeah, man. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.